The first one is obviously your retina scope, which I would encourage 100%, and um, possibly your auto refractor. Another good starting point is if you have it to get a topography or even some type of tomography as well. So this is a pencil cam, but you know, use what you have available to you in clinic. There's lots of useful information here. And for a lot of maybe students or practitioners that aren't used to looking at pentacams, this can be very overwhelming. I've highlighted a few points that I look to start with. So one of the first ones is the astigmatism. So what this does is it takes the sort of average flat meridian on the front surface. And this is just the front surface we're talking about here. And the average uh, flat meridian, and steep meridian, and take them away. So it takes away the diopters. And you can see, let me, so basically, uh, oh, one second. Uh, let me just get this up. Yes, yeah, so if you look here, 42.1, 45.7 is your flat and steep meridian. And that gives us an axis of 36, or sorry, 3.6 diopters. The K max, this gives us an, in, an indication of what's the steepest point of the cornea. So we know that most corneas are roughly well, 40 diopters. This keratoconus has increased that to 46.8. Generally, if it's sort of below 50, we would put it in the sort of mild category. Once you're sort of 65, 70, then you're getting into more advanced keratoconus. This is only used as a very rough guidance to how advanced the keratoconus is that you're dealing with. We've got the front surface astigmatism, the back surface astigmatism, generally because of the nature of keratoconus, because it's stretching forward, as the front surface steepens, so does the back surface, okay? And I would expect some of this astigmatism to probably cancel out some of the front surface, okay? Because um, one will be a, a sort of a, a mirror image nearly of the other. But these give you an idea of where the axis is. If we just look at the, the front surface here, so what I've done is I've taken the uh, front curvature of the right eye and the left eye. You can actually see where the sill is. So a lot of us have, you know, no with the rule, against the rule of stigmatism. With, we're using those same principles. We can tell that, you know, a good starting point here would be in the right eye, roughly 120 degrees axis. Left eye, roughly about 75. Okay, so we're just trying to line up the um you know the the meridian which we're going to put the um axis along for the negative cylinder and again sorry i probably should have specified i will be working in negative cylinder throughout this whole presentation generally what you expect is a cylinder that's slightly temporal and that tends to be what you find with keratoconus if with your retinoscopy or your auto refractor you cannot find a starting point cannot find a starting point at all, I would suggest these as your starting points. Plus two with a minus four cell. So essentially that is spherically um, zero, the mild keratoconus. The moderate keratoconus um, is actually a little bit plus, but from working in, in keratoconic refracting clinics a long time, if you can't figure any starting point, either put in the mild or the moderate prescription, depending on the K max, and this will give you a really good starting point. From here, you're going to do big sphere adjustments, big cell adjustments, and you would be surprised at how, actually, uh, how accurate or this starting point will get you.